All right, what's up everyone? Today I want to do another experiment using some of this reusable grow medium, specifically the 304 grade stainless steel. Now I had just done a video showing off this versus a poly, basically a plastic style mesh. And personally, I have found to prefer this 304 uh, grade stainless steel over the uh, plastic mesh for many reasons, mainly the fact that it's gonna last me a long time and it's quite easy to use. Also, we saw better germination overall on the stainless steel compared to the plastic, so that's why I'm gonna continue to use it. Now, what I wanted to do today is actually, number one, I just wanna start some more grows with it. That way I can show you guys what it's like to grow on this the entire way through and then what it's like to actually clean this after harvest because that was one of the biggest questions that we got. Uh, but the other thing I want to do is I want to compare it against some other kind of grow mats that are uh, specifically for like hydroponic growing. So you can see how here how this mat here is meant to be grown directly on top of uh, for whatever the crop is. And it's funny enough, I think that's Rambo radish in the picture and that's what I'm going to be using today to grow on top of this is some Rambo radish. So what this is, is this is actually a company that we knew back in the day called VegBed and they started licensing out their product to Mountain Valley Seed Company which is also uh, sold through True Leaf Market. Now this medium, I do like it, however, I question uh, the ability for it to uh, be biodegradable. It's claimed to be compostable and stuff like that, but it's only really at, uh, I think, industrial facilities. We have tried to break down some of my, our own compost and we didn't really have much luck with it. And we ended up having to just kind of take it and throw it in the trash. So what this is, is this is bamboo fibers that have been made into, uh, kind of basically spun almost into like a, a cotton style um, fabric mat. So this is gonna be really good for water retention, which the stainless steel obviously is not gonna be good for. The stainless steel has no water retention, so we just have to be really careful not to underwater or overwater it. So let me, let me, let me hoe it. <laughs> let me go ahead and place uh, my veg bed here into these two trays. And let's go ahead and take a look at it in this tray. So one thing I'm noticing right off the bat is, I got a stink sticker on my finger. Uh, is that the veg bed is actually larger than the 1020 tray, which means whenever I go to put this um, into germination, I try to put a tray onto it, it's actually not going to create a great seal and it's going to probably force up the tray a little bit. So that's one thing I'm already disliking a little bit about this. They should have cut this, it looks like about half an inch shorter uh, so that we don't have that issue with it um, not fitting within these 1020 trays but it is what it is. We'll go ahead and keep rolling with this product the way it is. All right, so like I said for this experiment, I'm gonna be using some Rambo Radish. Again, this is from Mountain Valley Seed Company, which we get through um, True Leaf Market. And I'm gonna go ahead and get to seeding. So last time I did radish as well for, this, for the reusable grow medium, I did about 25 grams per tray. I'm gonna do that again because I feel like that was a good density. We could have probably taken it up to 30, but you know, let's just stick to 30, or 25 and see how it goes. All right, so we got 25 grams of seed for our first tray. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I'm gonna seed the stainless steel uh, medium here. So now what I did is this actually came rolled up and I had to spend a little bit of time picking my hands and really forming this into a shape. Uh, that way it doesn't have these massive ripples in it and creating high spots and low spots. So that is fairly even. I mean, there's a spot over here in this corner that's a little bit higher than the others, but you know, that's all right. So what I like to do is I like to give this a slight mist and the reason is, is that it helps the seeds stick uh, during the seeding process. And that way it doesn't just kind of, uh, whenever you toss the seeds out, it just bounce all over the place. I did that, get this situated in the middle here. And let's go ahead and seed it. So I'm losing a few off the side and anything that goes off the side is really not gonna end up growing because I'm gonna show you guys how I rinse out these trays uh, during this grow process. If we have any issues with mold or anything like that. And that will knock off anything that's on the side here that's not gonna end up really growing. So my goal here is just to get this spread out as evenly as I can, trying to make this seeding density um, just spread out. You don't really want big clumps or anything like that or you're really just gonna agitate the airflow in that area. You're gonna choke it off and really you want good airflow throughout the whole tray. That way you really prevent any kind of mold or anything like that. Bam, so first tray is down for 25 grams of the Rambo radish. And I'm gonna go ahead and get my second one. I'll see you guys in just a moment once I've seeded my second tray and I'll show you guys seeding the uh, veg bed over here. All right, so I've got the 25 grams measured out for the veg bed and I'm gonna kind of do the same thing over here where I'm gonna give this a nice light mist and that way I can really encourage these seeds to uh, stick on contact instead of bouncing all over. 
I will say visibility wise it is really easy to see where you're seating on this medium which is definitely a plus and it kind of reminds me of our old favorite grow medium which was BioStraight. Uh, that was the original hydroponic medium that we really used a lot of but we stopped using it because it really didn't break down in our compost again and uh, you know that's something that uh, we want to do is to be able to compost this at our house instead of having to take it to an industrial facility. All right, great. So I've got my first tray seated. I'm gonna do the second one here as well, and I'll see you guys in just a second. Okay, so I finished seating all of the trays here. Now what I need to do is I need to get all of these watered. I'm gonna wheel this over to my sink station over here. I'm gonna show you guys how we water with our uh, sink hose. Boop, boop, boop. On our mobile table. All right, so we're over at our sink, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my little uh, mister here, and I'm gonna put this on the mist setting, and then I'm gonna give this a nice watering for both of these. Now, what I need to be careful of on this veg bed medium is that I can retain water really quite well, and you can overwater it. It's kind of like hemp where it's kind of deceiving with how much water it can actually hold. Uh, so this one does hold quite a bit of water, so we wanna water this well, but not overly saturated so that we cause issues with it. Damn, I can tell it's kind of getting nice and watered whenever I can see uh, the transparency happening. I can start to see that little bit of a tray below. So I know that's nice and moist there. Let's do the same thing for the bottom one. So you can see how much water this is really taking and you'll, we'll compare this to the stainless steel which will be a much, much lighter misting compared to this. Bam, okay, so both of those are watered. Now let me get my stainless steel medium here. I'm gonna start pretty far away, that way I don't knock these around and just give them a nice quick mist. And that right there is it. So I probably gave it about half the water uh, that I gave the other ones, and it's because it doesn't really need to absorb all that water. If I add too much water, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna create a lot of stagnant water uh, in the tray, and I don't really want that because that just causes issues. But we do want enough water, uh, that way we get some nice germination and humidity within the tray. All right, cool. Those are both done. I'm gonna set back my hose, and let's wheel this back over to our station over here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and stack these up for the germination process. And so now what that means is I just wanna trap in the humidity as much as possible with these trays, because if I just leave the tops open on this, they are both gonna dry out regardless. There's just too much airflow in here uh, for them to be open like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this first tray and I'm gonna put my second tray directly on top of it. And then on top of that, I'm gonna take a no hold uh, tray and I'm just gonna place it directly on top. So that way we have all the uh, humidity trapped into that tray. And now let's try to do the same thing with these two trays. But I, I'm telling you, we're probably going to have an issue uh, with this amount of fabric over here because these trays already fit pretty snug. So it's kind of, it, it feels like it's kind of working a little bit. So hopefully that little bit of extra medium there isn't going to cause issues. Yeah, it seems like we're getting a pretty nice seat on it. All right, so now I've got both of these covered up. I need to get a little bit of weight on top. I'm going to do something pretty simple for radish. Uh, it doesn't need a whole lot of weight. It's really can grow with um, 15. You know what? We'll do 15 pound pavers for this. Bam. So we're going to use one 15 pound paver for the stainless steel and one 15 pound paver for our veg bed side. Now what I need to do is I need to get this onto a shelf to germinate. And it looks like I got a, a shelf down here with the lights off. So that's what I'm going to be using. Okay, so now both of these trays are in the germination process. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come out tonight, I'm gonna check the water on them, I'm gonna give them a, a, a nice light mist if they need it, and then I will see you guys tomorrow for an update. And we're just gonna follow this throughout the germination process, uh, see how they grow, and then eventually we'll take a look at them once they've grown up and they go into the light, and we'll watch and see what kind of harvest weights we get and everything from that, and what was the ease of use. Is it worth using another medium, or can we just get away with using a reasonable grow medium like stainless steel? So I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, y'all, we are on day two for this reusable grow medium versus veg bed. So let's get these pavers removed and let's take a look at our growth here. Man, I'm gonna give this a little bit of tap in case we got any clingers here. Okay, so it looks like our stainless steel side is getting a tiny bit of germination here, which is nice to see. Now I just wanna kind of, I'm gonna do a sniff test on this to see if I have any stagnant water. And I am getting a slightly odd smell from it. So yeah, we got some stagnant water here. What I'm gonna do is I need to get this drained out or let me get a fresh towel. Mandy, would you mind grabbing me a fresh towel? All right, so the main reason uh, we just don't want this, it gives a, I can smell a, a slight smell from this uh, stagnant water here. 
which means it'll probably cause us some issues down the line. So I just want to get this out of here. And I'm probably going to go ahead and do that for my second one as well. I'm going to change my mind on this. I'm going to go rinse this off in the sink because this towel didn't absorb it enough. <laughs> and I'm just giving my tray here a nice quick rinse so we don't have any stagnant water chilling in the bottom. So let me set my reusable grow medium here. So again, we're starting to see a little bit of germination here happening on this. I mean, this is only... Uh, just about 24 hours now since we have first uh, kind of started this process so you're not gonna let, going to really see a whole lot of germination right off the bat and I'm just gonna give these a quite quick mist all right so let me get the lid put back on this one now let's take a look at our veg bed side so now same thing here I just want to see if I got too much water or anything give this a nice tap so we are seeing a little bit of germination here. I would say that we are a touch ahead in germination. I'm seeing more of these radicals beginning to pop out than I am on the stainless steel side. Uh, let's see, we don't have any stagnant water in the bottom, so that is good news. And then checking our second tray. Uh, again, I'm seeing some really good uh, germination here. We are actually ahead of the stainless steel at this point, uh, so far with the veg bed. So I'm gonna get the lids put back on this. I'm gonna get this taken over. I'm gonna get my weights pack put, put back on and put back onto the shelf. So I'll see you guys tomorrow for another update. All right, so we are on day three for this Rambo Radish reusable grow medium versus veg bed trial. So let's go ahead and take a look here at our growth for both of these groups. So I'm gonna give these a little bit of a doop, doop, tap and doop, tap as well. So let's see where we're at with the germination. Now, Rambo Radish I've noticed is one of those crops in our grow space that is just quite a bit slower to germinate than most of the others. Um, but again, we are still getting some really nice germination out of these. You can see a lot of these radicals beginning to peak out and they're doing their best to start now trying to drive down into the grow medium. And one of the beautiful things about radish is that you can really see the purple tip on the end of that radical. So you really can see where that little radical is trying to go down into the medium, which is pretty awesome to see. I kind of forgot about that for the Rambo radish. So let's go ahead and take a look at our stainless steel side. And again, same thing over here. A lot of these have germinated and you can see them beginning to really push themselves down into that grow medium. You can see those little hairs reaching out to try to find something to latch onto. And a lot of these are really finding their way through that stainless steel mesh, which is some really great news. Right here, we can actually take a peek at our roots and see if they have begun to peek through. So, so this is what I'm talking about with um, the veg bed here. You can see on the stainless steel side, how many of these radicals have already pushed through they're ready to start getting down in this bottom area, so we, which means these are getting ready to be um, kind of ready for bottom watering and also they have more access to this water down here. But the issue with the veg bed is that we really, really rarely see a whole lot of these radicals ever pushing through. It's one of the biggest challenges. I feel like they wove it just a little bit too densely and this is something that we talked to them about about a year and a half ago and this is some of their newer products that, they're, uh, that they've been working on. And again, this seems to be kind of the same similar issue here. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go ahead and get all these a uh, decent little light watering. It looks like everything's still pretty moist, so I don't wanna go too much on both of these. And we're seeing some really good germination on the trays underneath as well. So you will see a few clingers that we're gonna lose on the top trays, but I think right here, actually, this would be a good example. On the veg bed side, you can see how many of these um, just weren't able to get themselves down into that medium, so they're getting pulled up onto this top tray and these are going to end up dying uh, because they won't be able to get themselves down into that medium versus on the stainless steel side, we're seeing, I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of them maybe compared to probably 15 or 20 or more on the uh, veg bed side. So that's just something to be really aware of there and uh, something just to look out for. So again, I'm just giving these a nice light mist and these are going to go back on the shelf for another probably two to three days of germination. But again, I'm gonna give you guys another update tomorrow and we'll see how these look. I'll see you guys then. All right, you guys, we're on day four for this Rambo Radish reusable grow medium versus veg bed trial. So let's get these bricks removed here and take a peek, see. All right, so same thing I do every day. Give it a little tap, tap, tap. All right, stainless steel side is looking great as well as our veg bed side. Ooh, kind of taking a look. I feel like the uh, stainless steel side here is standing up just a little bit better and starting to get a little bit more situated than the uh, veg bed side is. So that's pretty exciting news considering it felt like it was slightly behind compared to the veg bed uh, initially. Let's go ahead and get a peek at our bottom tray here. 
So again, we're seeing some really great germination out of both of these trays. I'm very happy with that. Let's do the, the big, big concern, which is are the roots making it down into the bottom tray yet? Oop. So big difference here. We probably have maybe 20 over here on the uh, veg bed side, whereas on the stainless steel side, we are seeing a lot of these guys looking really happy, healthy, and jumping through this medium. So that is really exciting news. I'm really uh, happy to see that the stainless steel side here is catching up a little bit. What I'm gonna do is give these a nice light rinse. Rinse, <laughs> spray. It's kind of like a rinse, right? And I'll check out the bottom of the veg bed side as well. So I feel like this, they just don't look nearly as happy, like they're trying to stand up as strong uh, as I'm seeing over there on the other side with the stainless steel. So again, same thing kind of here with the uh, second little veg bed tray. It looks good, but it's also, I don't know, this is a point of concern with me because what can happen now is either a lot of this stuff on the surface is gonna to begin to die because those roots haven't been able to get down or it's really gonna to begin to latch into there and start digging itself through the medium. So I, the, really the telltale will be probably tomorrow and the day after with these. Again, Rambo Radish is one of those crops that takes just a little bit longer uh, to get germinating uh, that we've noticed in our grow space compared to a lot of the other radishes, which is like day two. These things are like just going. Uh, usually for like the hong bits, uh, long scarlet cincinnatis and the other radishes that we have. So that is it for these two. Uh, again, I'm gonna make sure I give this a nice light rinse. And since we do have such good roots on these, I am gonna rinse. I keep saying rinse. <laughs> I, I, I feel like I really wanna give a rinse to these. Uh, that's one of the benefits of this uh, grow medium over here on the stainless steel side is that we could actually rinse off um, these stainless steel meshes once they've germinated a little bit stronger because <clears throat> they do get latched really well into the stainless steel medium and then we can actually wash it in our sink and knock off anything that hasn't germinated well any of those seed holes that are still sticking around versus on the veg bed side you can't really do that I mean we could give it a shot but I don't know that we're gonna have as good of a result and just because I did it on the other side I'm gonna give a little bit of water here uh, for both of the bottom of the veg bed groups. Bam, so that is it. No more rinsing, <laughs> I'm gonna put both of these groups back up on the shelf. And again, I think tomorrow and the day after, we're really gonna see whether or not uh, there's gonna be a big difference here. I'm kind of feeling like the stainless steel is gonna pull ahead, whereas in the beginning, the veg bed was taking the lead. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, y'all, we are on day five. <laughs> I just pinched my finger. Nice. <laughs> day five for this radish experiment and these are looking like they are very much ready for the light or sorry not the light for blackout um, what we want to do now is we want to get these things uh, the ability to stand up because they have been smushed underneath that weight for i would say just a few hours too long uh, this is about halfway through the day today on day five i was out doing some lawn work today hence my nicely sunburned shoulders and uh, i would have preferred to have gotten these into blackout this morning but hey you know we're here all right, so blackout is quite simple. What I'm gonna do is, first of all, we're gonna take a look at all these growth side by side. So I would say that the um, two stainless steel ones seem a lot healthier in their growth. I mean, everything's kind of pushed down and pretty squatty at the moment, but I'm just noticing a lot of uh, not really happy looking growth over here on the uh, veg bed side, at least on this first tray. And you can see how much that medium is kind of starting to turn like a nice brown. Uh, well, it's not really nice. That's not a good sign, perhaps. And then same with the second one. I mean, it looks okay. It's, it's fairly squatty. I'd say that this one is pretty comparable to the stainless steel. What I'm gonna do right now is, uh, we had some issues with our uh, basic salad mix having a tiny bit of mold. So I mixed up an H2O2 spray that was uh, 20 ounces of regular water and then one ounce of 12% uh, hydrogen peroxide, which is H2O2. And I'm just gonna give these guys a nice light mist today kind of try to prevent any issues here. Because what I would do is actually take these over to my sink and rinse out the whole tray, especially for these stainless steel ones. Uh, you can take it over to your sink and just spray everything off and it'll knock off all the kind of slow or decaying seeds or anything like that. But I can't do that with my veg bed. So I don't wanna make this test uneven by doing one thing I can't do to the other. You know what, let's go ahead and compare the root structures on these two and just see where we're at. Big difference there. All right, so we got maybe like, I don't know, 30 roots coming out of the, or radicals rather, uh, coming out of the veg bed side and a ton more than that coming out of the um, stainless steel side. All right, so we're gonna give this a nice light mist. We wanna make sure these roots don't dry out while they're in blackout. Let's see how this one, this one should be a little bit, yeah, that's a little bit healthier. 
seeing a little bit more roots, but still not on the level that we're seeing them out of the stainless steel side. All right, so that's it. Now to get these into blackout, super simple. What you're gonna do is those trays that were face down before, uh, what we're gonna do is reverse them and put them uh, right on top of our other trays. And it's gonna create a little bit of a dome. And what we're doing is we're allowing these uh, crops to stand up uninhibited, but we're also kind of keeping the light out. We're giving them a chance to, uh, for a few hours, it would probably be about uh, 12 hours at this point. Or what time? Uh, I try to look at what time it was. I don't even have a watch on. <laughs> uh, I think it's about 4 p.m. And we're gonna take these out of blackout most likely tomorrow morning. So there'll probably be like 12, 16 hours of uh, blackout at this point. It's not gonna be a full 24 hours, but it's gonna allow these crops to stand up um, un uninhibited and start getting ready to go into the light tomorrow. All right, so these are all now on the shelf. I gave them some water. I'm gonna come back out uh, a little bit later today just kind of double check everything and make sure that uh, these don't need any more water. If they do, I'm gonna give them that water that they need. And then I will see you guys tomorrow for another update. All right, y'all, we're on day six of this veg bed versus stainless steel reusable grow medium trial. And what we're gonna be doing today is pulling these out of blackout and taking a look at our growth here. Let me get all these top lids removed and let's go ahead and take a look at our growth. So at first glance, I think that all of these actually do really look quite comparable in their growth. We're seeing all these standing up quite nicely, which is what we wanted from the blackout process. Um, overall, I'm very happy with it, except for this one tray of the veg bed right here. Uh, I am noticing that little bit of browning right here in the middle of the tray. And the growth overall looks a little bit weaker on this tray compared to the rest of them. Uh, both of these stainless still look great, and this one veg bed does look pretty good. So perhaps this one just got a little overwatered here. Um, so let's go ahead and take a quick look at the roots before we put this into the light. So again, looking at the root structures, we're seeing a ton more of these uh, stainless steel side popping through and really doing a great job getting down into the bottom tray. Whereas on the veg bed, we are seeing what I talked about in the beginning, which is uh, those radicals really struggling to get themselves through uh, the grow medium and down into the bottom reservoir. That way they can begin the bottom watering process. But overall, I mean, the growth on most of these look great. This one I'm a little concerned about. We might get some weird uh, kind of molding down the line with this, but it's definitely time to get these into light. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get my light turned on here. I'm going to be putting these underneath three of our T5 uh, Barina 20 watt LEDs. Uh, these are the lights that we suggest to most everybody. They do a great job with the growth because they allow the crop to stretch a little bit while also providing some really solid growth. So now that we've got these underneath the light, the second thing we're going to do is go ahead and introduce the bottom watering to this. Now bottom watering is quite simple. All you're going to do is take a little bit of water and you're literally just going to introduce it to the bottom of the tray and that way the roots and the uh, medium have the ability to kind of uh, suck it up through capillary action into the uh, plants. So I'm going to add about two cups to each one of these trays. The stainless steel we're going to be a little bit more cautious of because um, like, unlike the veg bed, it doesn't have the ability to retain moisture that well. So what we need to do is make sure that it has enough water that it doesn't dry out, but also not too much that it doesn't um, cause any issues such as rot or anything like that by sitting on the uh, base of the plants too much. So that's it for today. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come out later today. I'm gonna add some more water if they need it. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for another update. All right, y'all, we're on day 11 of this experiment for this radish microgreens on this stainless steel grow mat versus this veg bed premium grow mat. And what we're gonna be doing today is comparing the growth after six full days of these growing in the light. Now at first glance, I will say these are all quite a bit smaller than I would like them to be. And that is because we use no nutrients whatsoever in our water. Had we added something like ocean solution or some kind of other hydroponic uh, liquid fertilizer to this, we would have a lot uh, fuller growth in my opinion for radish. But overall, I'm happy with the growth where it's at. It does look nice and full on all these trays. So I think this will give us a good baseline here. Just go ahead and take a look at. So at first glance, let's go ahead and start with a stainless steel and a grow mats, one of the veg bed grow mats side by side. So looking at the growth on the overall uh, canopy here, I think all the cotyledons look like they are nice uh, sized. I am seeing a few true leaves kind of coming through, very, very small true leaves kind of peeking up here in the middle of these, which means we are right at the stage that we want to be harvesting these radish for us. Some people will grow them out just a little bit longer, get a little bit more true leaf out of it. However, I think this is a great point right here for this. Between these two trays, I will say that the stainless steel side does seem to have uh, a little bit uh, tighter of a canopy, a little bit less uh, expanded compared to the veg bed. And that could be because this veg bed 
did have a little bit of a uh, boost in the germination phase because it did retain so much water. However, comparing the two side by side, they look pretty great. All right, so looking at these two side by side, I'm seeing a lot better results here. The stainless steel side over here feels a lot fuller than the other one does, which tells me that this probably had a little bit better germination uh, than uh, our first stainless steel side over there. Comparing these two side by side, if you weren't to look at the mediums, I would say that these look pretty dang identical. I am noticing that the veg bed is just slightly further ahead. And again, that could be because of how it did have a little bit of a booster in the germination phase uh, compared to the stainless steel, which doesn't really retain that water and is a little bit slower to germinate. So that's it for first glance. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get all these harvested. We'll take a look at the mediums, uh, compare some harvest weights and flavors and things like that. So I'll see you guys in just a second. All right, so I finished harvesting all four of the trays, but before I get into the harvest weights, I wanna go ahead and talk about one thing, and that is you smashing that thumbs up button, clicking that subscribe button if you guys are interested in more content like this, and also click that notification bell, that way you guys get notified, notified <laughs> when new videos come out. So let's also go ahead and talk about the mediums real quick, because as I was harvesting, one thing I noticed is, uh, first of all, harvesting both of, the, both of these stainless steel mediums was a really straightforward process. It was really easy to harvest from uh, and looking at the medium itself, I'm not seeing a lot of uh, like disease or decay or anything like that, or even uh, many molds or anything. However, whenever I got over to these veg bed ones, uh, number one, I noticed a lot of fungus gnats jumping out of this thing. Uh, I noticed a lot of decay and a lot of like right over here, some like little black mold spores and stuff like that. So this medium has me a little bit more concerned with um, like, I don't know if you can see, I kind of moved around. We also had to leave a little bit more on this tray uh, whenever we harvested because of, there was so much decay. Um, so that's just something to kind of be aware of with uh, grow mats in general. Whenever we use BioStraight, we didn't hardly really run into issues like that. That's something that we primarily noticed on veg bed and uh, maybe hemp. Sometimes we kind of see a little bit of that black, uh, kind of a little bit mold happening. Uh, but for the most part, or in jute, jute was another one that was pretty bad for it as well. But uh, veg bed, definitely, it's very apparent. I mean, you can see it right over here on the side of this tray. Whenever a seed doesn't germinate well, you can just see those little black mold spores just really jumping all around that. And just all throughout this tray, just the, the decay that kind of happens whenever it doesn't get rooted very well. A lot of those guys just begin dying down in the bottom of this canopy, starting mold, and then those fungus gnats have just like absolutely took over this. So I tried to get some shots of the fungus gnats for you guys, and uh, we couldn't really get them because they're just so fast and they're kind of flying all over the place. So that's it for a quick uh, talk about what it was like harvesting these two. Let's go ahead and talk about the harvest weights for each of them. So like I mentioned, I had to leave a little bit more product on uh, the veg bed side. So we lost a little bit more uh, than we did on the stainless steel side. So starting with the stainless steel, the first tray, we got a harvest weight of 130 grams. Second tray, we had a harvest weight of 101.4 grams, meaning our average was 115.7. So let's say 116 rounded up 0.3. Uh, so I want, did want to say on that 101.1, that was probably that one uh, tray that we saw that had a little bit less dense growth compared to the other one that did feel a little bit fuller. So we're definitely seeing that 29 gram, gram difference between those two. As for the veg bed, one tray gave us 102 grams and the other tray gave us 122 grams, making our average 112 grams uh, for the two trays. Now again, that is because we did have a lead, lead had a lead, <laughs> Uh, anyways, um, I had to leave a lot of this behind because it had, I mean, just number one, there's just a lot of stuff just mixed all on the bottom of this canopy that was just like dying off, didn't look happy or healthy. And in fact, uh, some of it had like the really bad black little spots. Let me see if I can find some. Uh, it's kind of like this, but it was a lot more apparent on a lot of them. Uh, and it's like this kind of pathogen slash fungal issue that you get if you have bad germination. I hear Mandy found me a good green one right there. So you can see what that looks like on the green leaf. And it's just like a really gnarly kind of looking pathogen all throughout the cotyledon. And so really these two veg bed trays, I'm not gonna end up keeping the product because there was so much issues with the fungus mat, gnats, the mold, and uh, those cotyledons having that pathogen and kind of eating into the cotyledons there. As for the veg bed or the uh, stainless steel side, I'm definitely keeping all the products. So let's go ahead and show the product side by side. Boop. All right, so the top two, this is a little confusing. Should have done this differently, but the top two are stainless steel and the bottom two are the veg bed. So looking at the top two, again, our cotyledons look really nice and healthy. 
Now we do have one little spot of that kind of pathogen thing happening over here, but overall, uh, 90, I would say 99% of the tray was really solid in its growth, really beautiful coloration throughout. Uh, but however, whenever we get down to the veg bed, I mean, you can see right away on that green one, we had a lot more prevalent of that uh, pathogen eating into these cotyledons, and it was just uh, made the product a little wishy-washy for me. It's something that I don't really want to keep. Um, so I'm not going to be taste testing that, and then since I'm not tasting testing, tasting testing one, I'm not going to be taste testing the other. They all probably taste really radishy, and I'm sure they taste great. You know, I'll do a little tiny stainless steel taste, just out of curiosity. Boop, boop, boop. Radish is very intense in that flavor, especially the microgreens. Wow. Great radish flavor, super strong. Really do enjoy that product. It was nice and crunchy, but not too crunchy, even though that was harvested first. They did go a little bit limper than the other group. Overall, I really enjoyed the flavor for that radish. Uh, again, I'm not gonna be taste testing the, um, the veg bed ones because we did have so much mold and issues with that that we didn't see on the stainless steel, so I'm not gonna be taste testing that. All right, let's go ahead and look at this while we chat. Boop. So root growth, I mean, right off the bat there, you can see how much healthier this uh, stainless steel is, how many more of these radicals we were able to get driving through uh, the medium down into this bottom reservoir and make it for a super happy, healthy, white looking root structure. Recapping the test, we want to test out and see how a stainless steel reusable grow medium would compare to a premium grow mat. Right off the bat, I'm leaning right towards the stainless steel grow medium again because we didn't hardly see any issues whatsoever with mold on this. We had like way, way less uh, issues uh, with that pathogen up in the cotyledons for this. And our harvest weight was actually comparable, if not uh, a little bit better. It was uh, a, an average five grams higher than the veg bed. But had we actually been able to keep all this product and I was able to get this, we probably would have been tied because there was, again, like I said, a lot of product that we just had to kind of leave behind there on the veg bed side. As for ease of use, the stainless steel is a little bit more challenging to use compared to the veg bed because the veg bed does retain that water quite well and it helps with the germination. However, we didn't hardly see those radicals being able to drive themselves through that medium because I feel like it's woven too densely. And that's why we saw less root structure down here compared to uh, the stainless steel side, which you're able to just to drive those radicals straight through and they have plenty of room to breathe and get down into that water. Now, the one issue with this is that it can dry out a lot easier than the veg bed, but again, the veg bed almost retains water too well, and that's why we saw so much mold and decay on that surface because everything that wasn't able to drive its uh, radical down into the medium and actually get rooted just ended up dying off on the surface, and then it became a party house for those uh, little fungus gnats and molds. Let's go ahead and talk about how we clean off this medium. So Mandy, if you would, would you grab me my little favorite tool? Alrighty, so I want to show, this is the little device that we like to use. Um, I've actually 3D printed something similar to this, and there's a lot of things that you can use. Basically what you need is something flat to scrape along the edge of this. I like something that's stainless steel because I can sanitize it well, and I know it's gonna last for a while. Um, this is a little chopper for the kitchen. You can use it for like pastries, pizzas, and things like that. Uh, it's fairly cheap, about eight bucks. We've got it now linked in our Amazon store, so we'll put a link to that down below, along with a link to this stainless steel. So I'm gonna show you how we do this here. Now it is quite easy. You just find you a corner, you just pull up that corner, and then boop, just like that, we've already got this lifted up. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take this little scraper, and either side that you scrape, what's gonna happen is the other side is gonna fall off super easy. So I'm just gonna take this little device, and I'm just gonna go down like that. All right, just like that, all the roots are scraped off. Now watch on this other side how easy it is all just gonna come off. I'm just gonna kinda barely kinda brush this. So you can see it's already falling out pretty easy here. Now again, what we're gonna do is just the same kinda thing on this side. Take it, give it a nice scrape, scrape. I prefer to do this on my compost. It's a little messy of a process, but I'm just doing this in here to show you guys how we do it. Man, and just like that, all this thing needs now is a good rinse to knock off these uh, roots. Here, I can show you that real quick. We'll go over to the sink and I'll show you how we rinse it out too. Okay, so I'm over at my triple sink station here. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna whoop, kick on my water hose. I'm gonna grab me my sprayer and I'm gonna set this to, now there's a lot of good settings you can use. I'm gonna use flat just cause it has a good arc there. And you can see how much of this root medium is still just kind of hanging on and how easy it just kind of comes off right there as soon as we give it a little spray. All right, so what I would do is I'd go again with the scraper. So let me go ahead and grab my scraper again and get it off these last little stubborn roots. And I've personally found that if I leave this out in the sun, 
for like two days and then I do this, it just like literally just flakes off super easy. So the wet ones are a little bit more evasive because they can kind of mush as you kind of try to scrape them. But um, you can notice that this has a little beveled edge on it. So it's got a little bit of a edge to it. And what I do is I kind of use just primarily like a corner to really make sure I can get anything that is uh, still hanging on there. Okay. So we're like 95% of the way there. I just kind of keep messing with this process a little bit more. But again, that's why I like to do this um, after it's dried out a little bit. I don't like to uh, try to scrape as soon as I harvest uh, because as you guys can see, there's just like little clingers that just get a little mushy and they hang on really well as opposed to uh, when it does dry out a touch, it literally just kind of flakes right off. All right, I'm just kind of winging it here at this point. I was gonna use this little brush here and see if that helped to get off those last little clingers and it seems like it is. Alrighty, I think we're at 99% if not all. There's a few tiny little clingers back there, but we are good. Let's go back to the station. Okay, so we're back over at our station here and I just want to share that process with you guys, how easy it is to really reuse these mediums. Uh, again, I've seen some people use their fingers in the past and things like that to kind of try to scrape it off. I find that a little bit challenging and hard on the hands. I really suggest a little tool like this, something that's going to last you, I mean, years and years, just like your reusable grow medium. And it's going to make sure that you get a really nice uh, clean cut across it. Now, the other thing I would suggest too, I really did like this little brush, having something extra to really uh, knock off the extra debris. I would suggest something probably wider that you get like a single good pass on um, with a lot of those uh, just like glass little clingers. Now the last step that we would do at this point is do some form of a sanitize because if I just reuse this, like I said, there's just some like little tiny guys still kind of hanging on here and you never know what's kind of hanging on on the medium. There might be a little bit of a pathogen or what, who knows. Um, so what I would do is do a, a sanitize. You can do this by setting this in the sun. Uh, for a few hours that does uh, sanitize with the UV and what I do is just leave it out and just flip it and that should be it for the day or you can even uh, do some kind of bleach dunk you can wash this in your uh, you can probably put it in your dishwasher as well a heat treat would be another good way of uh, sanitizing this I'm trying to think of all the options here and then uh, just like an H2O2 spray or some kind of antifungal nice uh, sanitizer spray like that would be good as well you can also wash this with dish soap you know there's a lot of options here just to kind of get this cleaned off um, and again, it's just, I just want to share the process of how easy it is to reuse this. And literally, uh, once it's done, all I got to do is just make sure any little warps or bends, anything that kind of popped up during that cleaning process, I just knock those out and I just set it back on my tray and I start over reusing this and reusing this and reusing this for years and years to come. So that's it. I'm going to go ahead and get the other one scraped off and uh, just throw away those other two grow mediums, see if they'll compost in my garden. If not, I might have to end up moving those over to my trash can. So I want to show you guys the entire process of how we start microgreens on a stainless steel reusable grow medium, how we grow it all the way throughout the process by first misting it, then turning it into bottom watering, putting it into the grow lights, and then how we actually clean off that grow medium and eventually reuse this again. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give us a thumbs down. If you guys want to see what we're going to do with these radish microgreens, be sure to check out Mandy's video. She's going to be doing a recipe using uh, fenugreek, radish, and Swiss chard. And she's going to be making some tikka, chicken tikka masala is like one of my favorite recipes that she makes. And she's going to show you guys how she does that using all those ingredients. And I hope that you guys enjoyed that one. If you guys would like to, our Instagram and our Facebook are both at On The Grow Farms. And our website is www.onthegrow.net. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day. Keep on believing and check out those reusable grow mediums. Links below.